Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on vertebrates. Our objectives for this lesson will be, how are vertebrates classified? What are the common characteristics for each group of vertebrates? And what are the advantages of having a spinal cord? What are vertebrates? Vertebrates are animals with backbones. We discussed invertebrates before, and those are the animals that do not have backbones. So vertebrates get their name because they have this backbone that's made up of these different, uh, all of these different bones, and we call these different bones that make up the spine vertebrae. And these vertebrae are needed to protect what's inside of the vertebrae, the spinal cord. And, excuse me, the spinal cord is basically the main point where all nerves in the body meet and communicate with each other. Um, and so it's very important that the spinal cord be protected, and that's what the vertebrae do. And they also help to support the muscles that surround the spinal cord. So the spinal cord is actually attached to all nerves in the body. Um, the vertebrates are more advanced animals than invertebrates. Uh, because of the fact that they have this more advanced nervous system, which includes the spinal cord, and most times also the brain, which is attached to the spinal cord. And that causes the vertebrates to be a more highly intelligent, more complex group of animals than the invertebrates. Also, because of the spinal cord allowing, uh, or the vertebrae allowing more structure and support for the body, the vertebrates tend to have more complex body stru structure than invertebrates. So there's more than 60,000 different types of species of vertebrates that have been identified and named. And some examples would be mice, apes, snakes, eagles, and I hope you thought of yourself, because humans are vertebrates. How are vertebrates classified? Well, scientists classify vertebrates in five major groups. The major groups are named fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and birds. Out of all of the 60,000 species that we've identified so far as being vertebrates, over 30,000 or about half or more are fish. So there's lots of different types of fish. And amphibians, there's about 6,000 species. For reptiles, there's a little more. There's about 9,000. And actually, mammals are the smallest group of vertebrates. And that's the group that we belong to as humans. We belong to the mammal group, humans, and uh, there's definitely lots of birds. There's over 10,000 different species of birds. So one way to remember the five major group names is something that I just uh, made up called bee farm, and bee farm is just going to be a way to remember the names because the B in B is going to stand for birds. The F in farm is going to stand for fish. The A stands for amphibians. The R stands for reptiles. And the M stands for mammals. So you can think of your own way to remember the five major group names. That's just my way. Let's first talk about birds. Uh, why are birds uh, so unique to the animal kingdom? Well, 
Birds have something that no other animal has. They have feathers. And that's one way, that's the main way that scientists are able to classify uh, birds from other animals. If they have feathers, they're in the bird group. And no other animal has feathers. So these feathers are used for uh, protection. They're used for a protective covering of their body. And they're also used for insulation and warmth. Uh, as you know, most birds actually cannot survive very long in extreme cold temperatures. Some can, but most can't. And so those feathers help them to moderate their body temperature. Beak, or the beaks or bills of a bird are another structure that distinguishes them from other animals. And different birds have different types of beaks, different shapes, different sizes, different colors. And the beaks are adapted to the type of food that that bird eats. So say a bird actually um, eats fish from the ocean, it's probably going to have a longer beak uh, because of that reason. Um, birds also are closely related to reptiles, which we'll talk about, because reptiles and birds both have scales on their leg. Well, birds have scales on their legs, and reptiles also have scales on their body. Um, some examples of birds would be peacocks, eagles, penguins, pigeons, flamingos. One thing is that all birds have wings uh, for flight or for movement. Not all birds can fly. There are flightless birds. And maybe at some point in history, long ago, maybe they were able to fly, but for whatever reason, they no longer fly. Uh, that would be, an example would be like the penguins or the flamingos. And sometimes birds can fly, but very for, for very short distances. So um, the wings are a distinguishing feature, but not all birds use those for flight. But they do use those for movement and moving fast, like the ostrich.